Now you all know how to say hey, hello in Swedish. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Härligt att vara här. Happy to be here. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, you're picking it up. How are you? Yeah. Well, it seems like we have a great spirit here, don't we? Huh? An amazing spirit. Well, uh, I, 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 I'm not going to do those dance tricks again. <laughs> now, uh, being introduced um, by this way, like Andy, uh, a headmaster, I never experienced in my entire life. Have you? Your headmaster introducing you uh, like he just did? It, it, it really uh, touches me and it really moves me a lot. And it put me sort of in a very difficult position to get started and to, um, to do a speech for you. So I hope that you bear with me. He, he tried to calm you guys down. But putting this video on, we're all geared up and I really want to dance. But uh, <laughs> I guess this session is more about leadership and, uh, and, and a few things that I got to share with you. All right. Now, um, according to Swedish customs, you're not allowed to eat or drink um, when someone is making a speech. I don't know about the British customs or the Irish. Ooh. All right, now you have a big clunk and say skull to each other because that's the last skull you're going to have in a bit, okay? So big skull to everyone. Skull. Now I didn't hear you all right. Skull. There you go. Skull. Skull Tommy Fan. And if you don't know what that means, that uh, don't remember it, <laughs> right? Wow. Um, I really got to say it's a, it's a true honor and it's a true privilege to be here and to be able to talk to you. But I gotta say, this is my very first time I'm doing a speech when everybody's drinking away and having a, a great party. So, so I know it puts a little bit of extra challenge to get your attention. Because if I'm not that funny guy, if I'm not having that message to bring across, I know you will say, oh God, what has this guy to say? Well, if you're not gonna listen today or tonight, um, you get an opportunity tomorrow. Isn't that great? Have another skull and you hear me tomorrow if you forget it, whatever. So, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, um, what happened there? What happened on the video? Dancing behind people? Was that fun? Was that crazy? Was it silly? Would you do it? No, you would not. <laughs> I don't believe that. Would you really dance behind people like that? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Well, we see tonight, and maybe we see that tomorrow. If you dare to get out of that comfort circle, that comfort zone, and really do things that you're not comfortable of doing, I got to admit, I don't. I didn't feel very comfortable of doing all those crazy. And uh, and uh, and one of you Irish friends of mine um, came up to me, came up to me, and said uh, when I was doing one of the. Um, um, filming, he came up to me and he said, all right, Magnus, you're a funny guy, but you're a terrible dancer. <laughs> so he thought I was a terrible dancer, but I did it to have fun and to show that you can stretch yourself and get out of your comfort zone and have more fun. Now, I prepared a little speech for you. I got my cards here and I, and I wanted to do this speech because um, I was asked to do a speech on uh, now, what was it? Hmm. Well, oh yeah, leadership. Leadership. I was asked to come and do a training on leadership. Um, tomorrow you're going to hear my entire story, um, what I've done and um, how long I've been involved in forever and so on. But tonight I wanted to share with you a few thoughts on leadership. In fact, a lot of them that I've been taking down are things that I've already been told. Uh, so the great thing is that we are in the duplicational business. You can duplicate, you can take a few notes down, and you can remember it, and you can use it for your team for the future. Now, what is the definition on leadership? Leadership versus being a leader versus being a boss. Now, what's the difference? What's the difference of being a leader or being someone's boss? Lead by example. 
That's a good one. Hey, good, a good one. That's it, absolutely. You need to be inspirational. You need to inspire others. Absolutely, yes. What else do you need to do to become a leader rather than being a boss? What's the difference between the two? You have to have glitter. We'll talk about that later, okay? Well, it's hard to, to, to be heard out here, so I just wanted to, to, to say very, very simply that um, a leader is someone that people want to follow, right? A boss is someone that is telling you what to do. A boss is someone that's got the mandate or has got the authority to tell you to do what you need to do. Well, this session is all about to lead a successful team, a leader need to have the following habits of success. Amazing attitude. Because it determines how well you do your business. Commitment. Because it inspires and attracts people. Ability to learn because it helps you to recognize the need for change. Discipline because it is the foundation upon all success is built. Take huge action because it will be the propeller for you to have your dream to come true. Have a big heart and genuinely care about others and help those in your team recognize the opportunity in this great business. Now, what are the habits of a leader? Well, the key to become an effective leader is to become that kind of person other wants to follow. So, as you prepare yourself to become that leader, here are a few tips. Would you like to hear them? Yes? yes? yes. Well, it all starts with an attitude. Uh, attitude is really the key uh, of a great leader, someone that you want to follow. They have an amazing attitude. Leaders have the ability is what you are capable of doing. The ability um, is what you are capable of doing. And motivation determines what you do. Motivation determines what you do, but uh, um, Attitude, it determines how well you do it. Do you get that? The attitude is, it's all about the attitude. I remember very clearly one night when I came home, uh, my mother was all thrilled uh, over forever. And she came home and she said to, to me and my two sisters, and she said, it's all about attitude. I said, like, oh, cool mom. <laughs> yeah, I was in uh, early, that was a long time ago. So, um, yeah, it's all about attitude. And she said, yeah, you know, you have to have a great attitude to succeed in life. I was like, okay, good mom, whatever that forever living kind of thing was, but attitude, cool. So the following morning, she comes down in the kitchen with an absolutely oversized T-shirt. I don't know if you've seen one of those really oversized, American size. She's been to an American event, and it said, attitude is everything. And I was like so embarrassed because it was my mother. <laughs> it was my mother coming down with that T-shirt and she had it for years. And she thought that the attitude was really. And I never understood at the time when I saw it how much it would mean to me in the future. Think about that, how much the attitude will change your life. Talking about what are the habits of a leader, Habits of a leader with regards to commitment. They're all committing to do their four case credits every month. Are you? They are committing to attending all events, like tonight. They are committed to prospecting and sponsoring. Yes. They are committed to their goals and dreams. They are committed to do what it takes. They are committed to success. True commitment inspires and attracts people. Nothing happens without commitment, and that is the true and the secret ingredients of success. Commitment. Are you commitment committed? If you're not, what do you need to do to show that you are committed of doing things? Was I committed when I started? 
Maybe not. Honestly, maybe not. Well, commitment is really one of the key things that you need to be committed to do it, not just say that you are going to do it. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that um, moving forward. Now, what are the ha habits of a great leader? Well, leaders need to embrace change. Um, they are incredible students, very typical for tonight. Yeah? They are students who recognize the need for change. They read the right books. Mm -hmm. They go to the right trainings. They learn from doing rather than waiting for someone else to do it for them. Don't say, I would if I could. Say, I will if I can. Understand that failure is not an option. Embrace change and ask yourself, how far am I prepared to take myself? Now, what changes can we do in our leadership for us? What can you do to change your leadership? And what can you do to become that great leader? And what do you need to change? It's a question that is more reflecting on all of us because we all need to change. We all need to change a few things to become that better person. What was on TV last night, by the way? Who cares? <laughs> Come on, what was on TV the night before? What? You don't watch TV? Come on, what was, the night, what was on TV the night, before, the night before that? No idea? Oh my god, I'm in the right classroom then. <laughs> Bravo! When I asked the question um, with my Swedish managers and, and some on other trainings, uh, they all go, oh, uh, it was this big football game, Sweden won against Germany or, or, or some other you know, great TV show that they were watching and so on. But in fact, you need to change and you need to make time. And the way you do that is by changing some of your habits into something better. And, and one of the things that I've taken down is that you know, TV is not necessarily, I don't need to feed myself with all the negative news and all that <clears throat> on TV. It's nice to watch a film or a movie sometimes, and sometimes it's good to keep up on what's going on in the world, but to feed your mind constantly with all that negative is not going to drive your business going forward. It's interesting to see that a lot of people that are driving for the, their business in forever are not watching much television anymore. It's quite interesting, isn't it? So, what kind of books do you read instead? Do you read books? Yeah. Leaders are readers. Correct. Well, if you haven't read many books, talk to people tonight wrong, among your table where you're sitting and exchange um, books that you read and books that meant, meant to you. Um, I asked a couple of guys before the speech, and they said, well, what's your favorite book? Oh, my favorite book is GoPro. It's such a great book. Has anybody read it? Yeah. Hey, well, the ones of you who haven't, ask them and make sure that you get a, um, put down the name of it, and, uh, you know, it's Eric Worre and so on. Okay, what about the most beautiful business in the world? Yeah. Yay! By Rolf Kipp. It's such a great book. Um, what about all the CDs that you can listen into? What about all the YouTube clips that you can um, watch instead? You need to embrace your change and to do things that are going to move you forward. With regards to being a leader, what are the habits of a leader? They are disciplined. Leaders are disciplined. Discipline is the foundation upon on all success is built. Lack of discipline will inevitably lead to failure. Lack of discipline will lead to failure. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. Leaders create daily disciplines. Now, are you creating those daily disciplines? Are you a naughty schoolboy or schoolgirl? Are you disciplined? Well, 
I don't know if I am, honestly, <laughs> all the time. Well, I guess almost 10,000 case credits can sort of put a bit of <laughs> lack, in, lack in the discipline sometimes. But discipline is a behavior that a leader needs to have. Action. What are the habits of a leader taking action? They take action because you cannot discover new oceans unless you have the courage to leave the shore. Those who take action are the envy of many who don't. Get on with it. Every minute wasted cannot get back. Action for the next three to five years and your financial security. And when do you want to be living the life of your dreams? Take action and do it now. Why wait? A lot of people came up to me and said, oh, it's such great, so good for you. You got involved in forever. So long time ago, you were one of the pioneers and so on, which I wasn't, but still. And they always come up with these, all these excuses. And I always say, well, you need to take action because it's never too late to start. Take action and do that now because I know that if you do it today, in the next three to five years, tomorrow you're going to hear a little bit about the lifestyle you can get. Take action. Take action. Habits of a leader with regards to responsibility. They take personal responsibility. They always act. They always look and behave like a leader. Do you? They are willing to go that extra mile. They are driven by excellence. The better, they want to be better than the average. To be prepared to do what it takes and to take control of your business and your future. Responsibility. Leaders are focused on the end results. They don't let anyone down. They tell you that it can't be done. Feed your dreams daily with po positive affirmations. What people say, what people say, what people do, and what they say they're going to do are entirely different things. And I believe that that was said by Jane Leach at one point. Responsibility, to take that responsibility and always act, look, and be that person that you want to be. Is that you, Jane? Did you say that? Yes, yes of course. <laughs> Round of applause for Jane. So do you always take that responsibility of your business? Well, I ask myself if I do, and sometimes I find myself not acting and leading like I want to be. And that's when I always have to look at myself again and say, well, I know this is so true, but how am I actually going about in life and being the leader that I want to be? Am I that person that people want to follow? Or am I that person that's got one side here and another and I'm not having that discipline? It's quite important, actually. And I struggle with it every day. Every day. What are the habits of a leader? With regards to fear, leaders always overcome all fears and doubts and stay away from negativity. Fear as in fools, F as in, uh, sorry, F as in fools, E as in evidence, A as in appearing, R as in real. False evidence appearing real, fear. Leaders get over any fear that you may have by recognizing them and working on them. Working on your fears. Stay away from negative people and situations. Eliminate your doubt. And you may have by asking enough questions to put your mind at rest. Leaders have passion for what they do. When you truly believe in something and you will carry it out in your heart, you accept no excuses. You only accept Results. Now, what are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? All those things that sort of cross our minds, do we really 
dare to do this or not? Well, one of the things that I was really worried about in the very beginning when I joined this business more than 10 years ago is that I thought that Allo wasn't going to be good enough. That people were going to say that, well, it's sort of uh, one of those um, flies. Can you say that? Um, one of those things that became really popular in the beginning and then sort of it dies. That it was just going to be peaking and then falling down. Or would there be enough customers? I always had those fears, all those false evidence in my mind that sort of kept me from doing what I needed to be doing. So ask yourself enough questions. Ask enough questions to put your mind at rest because Forever is truly a great company. Stay away from negative people and situations. In Sweden right now, we have a very hot, hot, hot potato. And that is that some of the products are not available in stock. And some people are arguing and being very, very upset that how can they not project it that we were going to need all this new product and all of that and all of that because we need the case credits. Some people write long, long, long emails and complaining their guts out how bad it is that Forever hasn't delivered upon the things that they expected them to do. And they drag a lot of people with them, and they're, all what they're doing is that they're creating negativity. And the more negativity around them, the more people are getting negative. Oh, yeah, that's too bad. And more and more people become negative. Now think about the leadership that you are doing. Are you following that and, and sort of raising your voice and going on and, and complaining? Or are you looking at it from another angle and seeing the positive things instead? Instead of saying, we ran out of that, look at the things that we actually have. Is the glass half empty or half full? I'm sure you heard many similar things to it before. The thing is that it's important to overcome those and to stay away from all the negative people and to, be, uh, and to show that you really have that great attitude and to show that you have the leadership skills uh, that will take your team forward, not backwards. What are the habits of a leader? When it regards to communication, leaders learn how to talk about the products. They learn how to make a prospecting call. They learn how to do a proper two-to-one or one-to-one -one, meeting. They learn how to participate in all the trainings and planning meetings and so on. It's not the man matter you cover so much, it's the manner in which you cover it. It's not the matter you cover so much, it's the manner in which you cover it. Do you get it? Said by Jim Rohn, quite an amazing guy. If you haven't read Jim Rohn yet, he's got quite a few things that you could um, be taught by him. Well, do you learn all the things that you need to do? Well, um, one of my first presentations uh, when I joined Forever, uh, I was really scared of doing a public speaking, a, a big presentation. In fact, my first presentation was in Stockholm, where I was born and raised, and I was in my t early 20s. Uh, and I came up, and I was going to do this presentation, and I had all the slides. In fact, at the time, I didn't have slides. I had a, an, um, what's it called, a projector. And, and you know, you take one of those things, and you put them on. Do you remember those? Not all of you, of course, right. but for the other of us that are slightly older. Anyways, <laughs> so, so those old projector, and you put it on, and, and, and you, you never really know which way it goes. Do you remember that? And you put it on. And doing your first presentation, it's so embarrassing. And you're trying to get it right, and you still you don't. And I was trying to talk and talk, and I was trying to be enthusiastic about forever, and, and when I was sort of halfway through my presentation, I saw this woman sitting at the very front row, and she was taking notes. And I sort of looked at that, and I was like, that's great, she's taking notes. I'm saying something important. At least I have something important to say. And I've been practicing, and I was doing my, my presentation, and on with the next thing on, and, and, and so on. And I did my presentation, and I was nerve-wracked. I was so uh, worried about this presentation and, 
and I heard myself, I got really dry in my mouth, and I heard myself, you know, that horrible, and nobody told me, drink a sip of water. Particularly if you have a microphone, it's so, you know, tell them. Nobody told me anything, nobody taught me things like that. So the presentation is over, and, um, and, and what I do is that I go down, and, I, and this woman come up to me, and this is said, all right, uh, well, thank you very much for, for doing this presentation. And she handed me over a long piece of paper with all the notes that she's been taking, which weren't notes. They were all the things that I could get better on. <laughs> I mean, she was just sawing my, 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 my legs off. It was just, I mean, she was like, first of all, you're smacking. Secondly, you're being too quick. Thirdly, you don't know how to put the, 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 the slide on. And, and fourth, you, you don't know your, and by the way, it's not, in 100 and so many countries, it's in 100 and so and so countries. It's not 75 in natural ingredients, it's actually two or 300 ingredients in it. It's 20 of the 22 amino acids, seven of the eight, just so you know. <laughs> Oof. It was a tough beginning, I gotta say that. Learn how to communicate is not always the matter, manner uh, no, uh, I gotta get it right. It's not always the matter you cover so much, it's the manner in which you cover it. I learned throughout these years that uh, working with Forever is more about your enthusiasm rather than your specific know-how in certain areas. It's the way that you deliver it uh, and, and, and with that smile that makes it, uh, makes it more fun for people to listen to. I got a couple of more. Um, I, I really, you know, what are the habits of a leader? They are persistent and consistent. They are persistent and consistent. They go, now let me get it right, they go over, they go under, they go around, they even go through, but they never ever give up. They never give up. They always find a way. A leader always find a way around the problem. They are persistent and consistent. They are motivated even though they have challenges. Leaders will always look for reasons for doing what need to be done rather than finding excuses for not doing what need to be done. Leaders will always put, um, life will always put obstacles in your way but you will find your way around them and move on. And here it is. Look at your dream book and your vision boards daily and feed your mind. What is a vision book? What is a dream board? Do you have one? If you don't, make one. It will change your life entirely. A couple of my distributors, in fact, Louise, one of the girls in my team, who was very, very skeptical in the beginning, when she joined Forever. And I told her to make a dream board or a vision board. Uh, and she thought it was a little bit silly because why am I gonna do this? I mean, my attitude is obviously wrong. Why am I gonna do it? Well, it will help you because it will feed your mind with positive things. So she made a vision board and she made a dream book and I had a planning meeting with her the other day in Stockholm and, and, and she reminded me and she said, you know what, Magnus? I hate to say this, but it actually worked. Five years ago, you had me to make this uh, dream board, and today I'm looking at it, and I looked at her dream board. At the time she made it, she was single, um, longing for a man in her life uh, with a house instead of a small flat, and having time and not being stuck in an office, and had to work day and night to cope with her life. Today she's married, she's got two children, beautiful children. Uh, she lives in a beautiful big white house, She's traveling the world, she's doing a lot of sailing with her husband, and she's really enjoying life. All those pictures that were on that thing, and in fact, even the car that she was dreaming about having even had the same um, wheels, the same spokes uh, outside. It was just unbelievable how real it became to her that that vision board, that dream book, uh, made a big difference in her life. So, Make that dream book, make that vision board, and make it come true. Well, a couple of more, and then I'm gonna finish. Uh, I know my time is almost up. 
but I'm looking for number 13, which is sort of gone. So we do 12 instead, twice. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Do you have a vision? Yeah? yeah? Vision or a dream? Yeah, okay. Uh, all right, so leaders must have a huge vision. An effective leader has a vision for what they want to accomplish, a vision that becomes the energy behind every effort and thought put behind into their business. You can't borrow someone else's vision. You have to create your own. A good friend of mine in forever, Kim Madsen, uh, a quite funny Danish guy who made a huge success in forever, he had a vision that he wanted to see uh, every single home in Denmark to have a yellow tub in their refrigerator. Now, what's your vision? What's your three-year vision? What's your five-year vision? Where do you want to go? Visions are very important. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the visions that I had in, in, in my life and, and how it changed. Finally... Here's my final card. Finally, as leaders, you have to take the responsibility of your own failures, but you also need to take the responsibility of your success. The on that's the only way you will learn. If you keep learning, you will improve. Remember that what we talked about, that if you will be learning, and you will be attending more seminars and more things with Forever, you will learn and you will improve. If you improve your leadership, you will get better and better, and in time, you will earn the right to lead on the level that you deserve. Thank you.